a good looking people you are. Amen. Did you know when Christ shines through your eyes, Amen. you become beautiful? Praise Absolutely beautiful. You're a bunch of good looking people. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm good looking. <laughs> All right. I bet you haven't done that in a while. Well, it's graduation day. We're going to celebrate. <laughs> We're going to celebrate Gretchen's graduation, and I'm celebrating uh, her tuition bills are gone, Paige's <laughs> tuition bills are gone. I'm done. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. So we are going to celebrate a graduation, but we're going to celebrate a graduation for all of us Amen. because today is a day to graduate for everyone. Maybe some of you need to graduate from negative thinking. Maybe some of you need to graduate uh, with a higher degree of faith. Amen. Maybe we need to walk away with a degree in hope this morning. Praise the Lord. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to celebrate God. We're going to celebrate His promises to us. Thank you, Jesus. And we will walk out of here with more hope than we walked in with. Praise you, Lord. Pray with me. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We give you praise. You are our Lord. You are our God. You are Savior, our Deliverer. You told us to wait on you and our strength would be renewed. Lord God, we humans hate to wait for anything. But waiting on you is worth every single minute, hour, day, month, year, decade. We will wait on you because your promises are true. Proved him when you sent your son to the cross to grant us eternal life, restoration with you, and hope beyond hope in an amazing future. Thank you, Father. Be with us today. Let us learn something new today from you. you. Touch our lives. Touch everyone here Thank you. with a renewed sense of hope in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, in Revelation 9, it says, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. God reigns over this church. He reigns over this city. And we just begin to praise him and give him, come on right now, give him honor, give him glory and praise.
Psalms 105 says, For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. So I'm going to say, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. In the hard times, God is good. All the time. All the time. And all the time, God is good. Oh, worship Him this morning. No matter what you face, no matter where you are, He is a good God and He wants to do great things for you. Hallelujah.
in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No matter how hard it is, no matter what you face, no matter those tears that you shed in the middle of the night because you feel so feel fearful and afraid, God is with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. O thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up. Thou hast made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought my soul up from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but for a moment, and his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. hide my face and I was troubled. I cried to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I made my supplication with prophecy. 
rock, it is there in my blood. When I go down to the pit, shall the dust praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, be my helper. Thou hast turned my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put forth my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. To the end, thy glory may see praise to thee. something that we believe in here at Hope Center of Christ, no matter what, no matter what, we rejoice the Lord in all circumstances. We praise him no matter what, right? We do that. We say when trial hits us, when adversity strikes, our first response at Hope Center of Christ is, thank you, Lord. Doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense to say that 
in the human cognition and yet in the spiritual realm oh my word and what it does to you psychologically and of course God created our psyches he created us this way so that when we praise him when we thank him when we have an attitude of praise in all circumstances we will get through those circumstances much better than if we go through it mourning and thank the Lord we can't do this on our own we are helpless without him but, oh, we read in Psalm 31, in you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. These are words are chosen for Gretchen today. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me and deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. These are the words Jesus repeated on the cross. You have redeemed me, O Lord, my God of truth. I have hated those who regard vain idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy, for you have considered my trouble. You have known my soul in adversities, and you have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a wide place. For I hear the slander of many, Fear is on every side. While they take counsel together against me, they scheme to take away my life. But do not let me be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon you. Let the lying lips be put to silence. Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you. Thank you. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before your eyes. Then I cried out to you, and oh, I love the Lord, all you saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful. The Lord preserved you, Gretchen. And he fully repays the proud person, but be of good courage. All of you here today, be of good courage. He will strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Those are from Psalm 31. Gretchen, come on up. We are doing something very different today. We kind of came up with this when she was talking to me about whether or not she should go to your commencement. How many people are there? Well, for my department, it'd be over 100. With, with the full-time and part-time, it'd be over 130 for my department. But overall, oh, 3,000? Yeah, and that's with the entire university. No, it's more like 100,000 people are there. When you, when you include, yeah, all the 3,000 graduates, but there's about 100,000 people that actually are there on the campus, usually at Fullerton, Cal State Fullerton. That's my, that's my understanding. But it's a big number. And she was like, do I really want to do this, Sheila? And I said, well, let's do something different. Come to Hope Center Christ and let us celebrate your commencement and let us help you graduate and let us commission you. Well, and the reason, too, is because, no offense, Cal State Fullerton, I really like you. We can only get four tickets a person. And I'm like, well, that's barely my family. And the reality is, you guys have been my family. And you've been my support. Sorry. You have been my support these past two years, three years, since I've been let go and since Sheila's been let go. You guys, that Sunday, she listed the pulpit and said, we're leaving. We're going to be someplace next week. You were the ones that came. You took that step of faith along with Sheila and along with myself and along with my husband. You've been our support person. You've had my back. When others didn't, you had my back. And I wanted to celebrate this with my family. 
and I want to be here with you. But it's really, truly a celebration, not only of what you have done, but what God has done through you. And so, you know, um, I wanted you to, I, I asked you to speak a little bit today and just share a little bit about your journey. I mean, we, we were let go. And yet, the, and the reason we share this is not so that everybody gets worried to think about, oh, we're dredging that up again, but it's, it's a testimony. It's a testimony to God's faithfulness and how every it, 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 a, a par, apparent adversity, sorry, every apparent adversity is really a blessing in disguise. You know that. You've seen that. We've taught that. But we are living testimonies that that's really truly what God does. And so our hope and prayer is that for you, if you're going through an adversity right now, if you're struggling, if you're feeling fearful, or if you've been hurt or ashamed or feel like you've failed or whatever it is and you feel like maybe even God has let you down, that we are a living message, a living sermon, a living testimony that God is in everything and we truly can count it all joy. So Gretchen, tell us a little bit about what God did in your life. Well, if we're going to go back to when I graduated my bachelor's degree, I always had a passion and a dream since I was 16 to be a therapist. That was my goal. And when I graduated and mom asked me to come work for her at the church, I said, okay, but you have five years because I'm going to go back and I'm going to get my master's and I'm going to get my marriage and family therapy and I'm going to be a therapist. I, they, she knew that very clear. Well, five years came and so did two babies and I became a mom and I started loving my work at the church. I loved doing that side of ministry. I loved having hours that I could be available for my kids. And last thing, next thing I know, it's 20, 25 years later. <laughs> and I thought that was it. I'd put that dream to bed. I'd forgotten about it. Um, and the day, literally the day Jim and I were fired, Jim said to me, do you want to go back to school? I kind of laughed. <laughs> no. I uh, didn't like college to begin with. Didn't like studying. It was a pain. And, that, and I'm like, I'm too old. And I had forgotten about that dream. I had just thought, it's too late for me. I can't do that anymore. And so I kept applying for jobs, and God didn't open the doors. And then um, I started volunteering. I felt the call to go volunteer a few different places. I put my hat out there in a couple places to volunteer. I ended up volunteering for a domestic violence shelter. And my first day, you have to go through a, in California, you have to complete a 40-hour training for domestic violence before you can even volunteer with victims of domestic violence. So once I finished that training, I, my first day in the, emergen in the sh emergency shelter, there was a security breach with one of the clients. The um, person in charge of the volunteers, mind you, my very first day, I didn't know what I was doing, went home sick. They didn't have anybody to cover. I said, that's okay. I've got, I'm, I can stay longer if you need me to. I just may need to ask for help because I don't really know what I'm doing. And they said, okay. Yeah, no. Then the security breach happened and the staff was running around. It turned out to be a very crazy day. And on the way home, because in order for me to go back to school, Jim and I could not keep our house. I knew that. I knew we could not afford to keep our house on one salary. So on the way home, I picked up the phone, and I said, honey, sell the house. I'm going back to school. And he said, okay. <laughs> Just that simple. And I went home. My first choice was Cal State Fullerton. I had been already looking into the different accredited programs for MSWs, which is Master of Social Work. And I get home. It's January, and the due date is in three weeks. <laughs> I have three weeks to get my application ready. And it includes at least one academic reference. Now, mind you, I graduated in 1990, and I'm thinking, I don't know any of my professors anymore. I told Sheila, I said, oh, that's it. I can't do this. Forget it. It's been too long. She goes, no, call the school. Check it out. I found two professors, emailed them both. One of them responded right away. He did remember me. He gave me my recommendation did some overnighting mailing because he had just retired and moved to another state. It was lots of fun. And lo and behold, he actually turned out to be one of the authors of one of my books I had to study in one of my classes. And I went, wow, who knew? <laughs> the Lord knew. So 
I got in. I mean, long story short, within three weeks, I got my application in. Got the, we were at the Women's of Hope Bible Study when I got the email that I got an interview to go to get into the program. And I didn't think I'd do it, but here I am. And God has just opened the doors. And I'm actually a professional social worker, which with an emphasis in community mental health. So this last year, I was interning with Hogue Community Mental Health as a therapist. Yes, it's really an accomplishment. We give God all the glory and all the praise, but yeah, it, this is a very competitive program, and the fact that she got in in that amount of time is truly nothing short of a miracle. So, you know, it's so the enemy so often wants to stop us from following God's dreams for us, and you can see how he tried, but when you're in fellowship with others, we encourage one another and the body of Christ to not give in to that. But I'm so proud of what Gretchen's done because she did. She could have been flattened by what happened to her. Instead, she let it launch her into reclaiming the dream that God had given her that had been lying dormant for 25 years. And in the last couple of years, she has, she's worked in a, um, tell, just give them a brief, you know, like tell them, like, a, like resume, bullet points, what you've been doing. Well, first of all, for those, most people think of social workers as the people that take children from families. That's really what we're known as. Um, usually that's, you know, we're far more than that, and usually that's a bachelor's level. Masters of Social Workers, which is a professional. Um, you can also be licensed, which will be my next step. But basically, we can do a variety of things. We are one of the many, and including psychology, it's one of the many educational um, mental health professions. Um, so we are just as much accredited to do therapy as, say, somebody who's got their Masters of Marriage and Family Therapy. Um, Basically, what I've been doing, in addition to school full-time, going to classes on two days a week, basically all day long. I'm there from 8 in the morning till about 7 o'clock at night. And then the other two days, I'm interning. So you're interning about 16 hours a week. The first year, um, I was placed in a homeless shelter, working with clients with different mental illnesses, which is why they were homeless, doing case management, that, that type of stuff. Did some stuff over the summer in an internship with some children who were in the homeless shelter. Um, it was an out, they weren't in the shelter, it was more of an out, um, outpatient type thing. And did some therapy there, so some children, worked with kids, social skills group, curriculum development. And then as I said last year, it was being at Hope Community Mental Health and working with a variety of clients, anywhere from ages, I had clients ranging from age from eight to 88 individual families, couples, um, doing all sorts of uh, treatment planning and interventions. That's the other thing with social workers is we are taught a variety of treatment plans and we're never taught to pick one that we like. We try to find the one that picks best with the client. So everything from cognitive behavior therapy to meditation to relaxation to all that kind of stuff. It's a long list. I don't know if you want to hear all that much detail. <laughs> That's fine. No, no. I'm. I, what I'm looking for and what you said was, I don't know if you heard the type of people that she's been helping and she's been trained to help. The homeless, the mentally ill, the, you know, a wide variety. She's been working with children, homeless children. That's what, that's what Gretchen's been doing. And, and I just I just feel like it's she's such a testimony to what we can do with our lives, what God can do with us when we think that we're broken. Talk about turning your, your scar into a star, Gretchen. God has done that through you. And it has been a rough, it's by rough, I mean, it's been a hard, you've had to work hard. Yes, I, I, my husband really hasn't had much. I mean, as many of you know, you haven't seen much of me the last two years even when we were still living in Orange County, because by the time I'm done with school and internship, I've got papers and a thesis and midterms and finals and, yeah, readings. We, we averaged about 200 pages a week read, read, reading assignments is what I figured between all the classes, yeah. And you, you barely passed, I hear. 
<laughs> okay, there's some people here. There she is. And there's others who have gone back. And this is one of the other reasons why I wanted to be here today. Is I know some of you feel like maybe you're too old. You've, you've lost the opportunity to reach your goal or to go for your dream. Or you're just now going back to school at an older age. And you're going to think, like I did, I'm too old. I don't know how to do a test anymore. I don't know how to write a paper anymore. It's been too long. You can do it. It is hard. You are going, and I did think many times I was going to fail. <laughs> I said to Dad, I said, Dad, I don't, I'm afraid I'm going to fail. And he said, oh, you won't fail. And I said, how do you know that is? Because you want it bad enough. So there are times where I thought I was going to fail. I didn't fail. I'm, yeah, I'm not at a 4.0 because I got one A minus, which I'm really kind of frustrated about. So I'm at 3.95 right now. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. So I wanted you to share that as a word of encouragement for anybody here who's thinking that you're, it's too late for you or it's been too hard for you or that God has given up on you, um, do not despair. Continue to have faith. Continue to have hope. God will not leave you where you are. He will pick you up and he will launch you further and higher than you ever thought and dreamed possible. That's what I believe. So today I'm going to ask those of you who are um, on the board, and you're here today. I see Pastor Harold, Debbie, Beth, and Jim. Will you come forward? Because we're going to, I want to do a commissioning for Gretchen. So Gretchen, I'm going to have you turn and when you're back to the, to the group, please. Right there. And while they're making their way forward, you can put your hands on Gretchen. Because the last words Jesus said before he ascended into heaven was this. Go therefore... The words of Christ to you, Gretchen. Go therefore, Gretchen. Make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all those things which I commanded you, which was to love. And lo, Jesus said, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So, Lord God Almighty, right now we commission Gretchen. We, I call it the great go mission. Lord, you've called her to go, to go and to be a missionary to all these hurting children and men and women who are dealing with the demons of mental illness. Oh, God, you have equipped her spiritually. You have equipped her academically. You have equipped her psychologically. She is a strong prayer warrior as well as a strong social worker. Oh, God, there are people out there. You will use Gretchen to save their life. And so, Lord, we ask that you will bless her. We thank you for today. What a celebration a victory, a victory, a victory. Thank you, Lord. Be with her and bless her and protect her every step of the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gretchen asked for a certain song to be sung today. And you know, I looked up the scripture for that and, and I want to put Gretchen's name in it, but I want you to put your own name in it if this is what the Lord is saying to you. Gretchen, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. We need help with the uh, singers today. We need you all to sing with us on this song. How many of you remember Count It All Joy when we used to do it back at the hotel? We had forgotten about it, uh, Gretchen, so thank you for bringing it up. And um, <laughs> Albert, go back to the 
uh, the first chorus. Um, so th th this, the first line is, do you think it's strange that in fiery trials around you, what's the next line? Let that fire, Let that fire refine, refine you like gold. gold. It's temporary pain. So count it all joy, count it all joy, count it all joy. So uh, what I want you guys to get is it's, in count it all joy, count it all joy, count it all joy. So it's the first, it's the count. So it's count it all joy, count it all joy, count it all joy. Okay? Let, let's all sing that. Two, three, four. Count it all joy, count it all joy, count it all joy. Count it all joy, count it all joy, count it all joy. Okay, if you can't get anything else in the song, when that part comes up, I want to hear you make the house rumble. It's easy to do it here, okay? And this is scripture, so claim this for your own life, no matter amen, what you amen. face, no matter what you're going through, to count it all joy. Hallelujah. Because at the very end, it says that God will make you complete, you. lacking in nothing. Hallelujah. Count it all joy. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Hallelujah.
right. Oh, I see the microphone. Yes. Good morning again. Thank you so very much for friends and members that are here today. We like to always give God the glory and the praises. Amen? Amen. Because we serve a good God. I said we serve a good God. Amen. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. We serve a good God. Thank you. Thank you. You know, this is a part of the service that we like to prepare our hearts for tithes and offerings. So if you want to do that while I make a few announcements. First of all, we like to welcome the people that are visiting us via the internet. And we like to encourage them, if they don't have a church home, tune into us every Sunday and during the week for Hope Center of Christ, where you can receive some hope and where you can receive the word of God. Those that are with us today, we know that you know the Lord, but we are still not on safe grounds as believers because we know we have an enemy. So we never want to close our eyes to the enemy who attacks us at all times and all ways. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Gretchen for what she did today because she encouraged us to, let's get busy doing what God has placed on your heart to do. She could have said time is gone, and time is, but time is time. Whatever you do, God will make a way for you. So uh, we have a connection card that's in front of you. If you would please take this connection card and fill it out, let us know what your prayer needs are so that we can pray with you. Also, encourage us by letting us know how the Lord has blessed you, how he's sustaining you. Please do that. And then our pastor always encouraged us to have some type of daily devotion. The weapons against the enemy will be the words of God. So that is why we encourage you to have a daily devotion. And also worship weekly. Worship. And uh, that daily devotion will get you through the week until you get here and start worshiping. Okay? And then find a place to serve. Yesterday it was so encouraging. We had members from the church here serving the seniors at the uh, Garden Grove Towers. Chili was provided by the Orange County Rescue Mission, and God's hands was the members of this church. And I like to thank each and every member that came out to serve Chile yesterday. Also, we have weekly Bible studies for the young at heart, for the teenagers, and for the teenagers. So if you want a Bible study, we can get you connected. And we need to get everyone here connected because as our church grow, we're going to need those disciples that know the word of God inside and out so that you can bring those that may not know the Lord along with us, okay? And we'd like to encourage you to always invite your unchurched neighbors or family members, co-workers, invite them to church. Bring them to church, sit with them, encourage them, and let them know that the Lord loves them. Let the Lord, let the Lord uh, speak through you to let them know that they are loved. Also, if you haven't received our newsletter, you can pick it up on your way out today. And those of you that are going to be visiting us over and over again, we like to ask you not to park in the neighborhood, but to park at the uh, at the Orange, uh, Orange, City of Orange Library. It's only about a 45 second to a minute, minute walk to the chapel. And so we appreciate that. We don't want you to get served a ticket by parking in the community. Also, we want to encourage each and every one of you to stay back today and to encourage Gretchen and let her know how we loved her. We got cookies today and some other refreshments. You can get a gut like I have if you stay back right? And so just come and eat as many cookies as you can. When I looked at that table, we need a lot of people to come and say, hello, Gretchen. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you for moving ahead with your accomplishment and what you've done. So please stay back and enjoy that, okay? So we thank you. So as we prepare our hearts for our tithes and offerings, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, 
you are great and worthy to be praised. Dear Heavenly Father, you gave us your son, Jesus Christ, who became the propitiation, dear Heavenly Father, for our sins. And dear Heavenly Father, you've told us that we should bring into your storehouse so that your kingdom can be served. And so we are praying right now with our tithes and our offerings, dear Heavenly Father, that we would bring cheerfully those gifts into your storehouse, dear Heavenly Father, and so that it may go out to be a blessing to your kingdom. Dear Heavenly Father, those that are giving of their talents, we say thank you. Those that are giving of their time, we say thank you. Those that are giving of their treasures, we say thank you. We know in full faith, dear Heavenly Father, we can never outgive you, the giver of giver. We thank you for what you've provided for us and will continue to provide for us. We bring our tithes and offerings now to you in a cheerful attitude, dear Heavenly Father, and we give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus Christ's precious name. The church said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. All of us aren't where Gretchen is, but we're going to get there. Amen. Hallelujah. Jacob wrestled with the Lord all night. And just about daybreak, the Lord said, let me go. But Jacob says, no, no, no. I will not let you go until you bless me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what we're going to do. The Bible says in Habakkuk, the vision is for the appointed time. It hastens toward the goal. It will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it. For it will surely come. It will not delay. That's God's word for you today. Hold on to it. Hallelujah. Just like Jacob, I will.
Guess what? They're in there praying over your offering again. I mean, somebody's going to be blessed. Take that seriously around here. Time somebody gives, boy, you, we pray a blessing over that gift because that's why God wants us to give. He doesn't need the money. He needs, we need the blessing. So remember that. The God we serve is a God of purpose. The God we serve is a God of design. Nothing just happens with our God. Always remember that God is a God of purpose. Now, you all know the story, you should know the story, I'm sure you do, of the children of Israel crossing the Jordan. And they crossed the Jordan on dry land. There was a purpose for that to happen. There was a reason why that happened. It wasn't just so they could not get their feet wet. There was a purpose. And usually when we read the story of the children of Israel crossing the Jordan, we miss the purpose. I'm going to give you the purpose right here. It's in Joshua 3, verse 10. God says, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Hivites, and the Parasites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. That's the purpose that God will drive out all the ites from in front of you. Just remember all the ites. Everybody has an ite in your life. If you're living and breathing, you have an ite that needs to be driven out from in front of you. There's a, stay with me now, there's a purpose why God dried up the Jordan and had them cross. The purpose was He wanted them to see His glory and His power and his majesty, so as they crossed on dry land, they would have the confidence to know that all those big enemies yet to be faced, all the ites, would also be driven out. You get that? Does that make sense? Okay, now, after they crossed the Jordan, God had them gather 12 stones from the Jordan and stack them up as an altar. There's a purpose for that as well, is because... God said, when your children ask you, what's that for? What's that altar for? You would replay the miracle and to say, God dried up the river to show us that he had the ability to drive out all of our enemies once we crossed that water. Does that make sense? The dry land and the Jordan drying up wasn't the miracle. The miracle was God giving them enough trust and faith in him that when they faced an even bigger enemy than a body of water, when they faced swords and giants and all of that, that they would have the confidence that God would drive them out. The parting of the water was not the miracle. The miracle was the faith that was infused in the people to say, wow, if God can do that, He can certainly do that. You get it? God is a God of purpose. Purpose. Some of you need a stone today. You need a memorial stone. When we're talking, anytime you talk about graduations or doing something important in your life or a milestone that happens in your life, you need a memorial stone. Now, I'm going to suggest a memorial stone that you might not expect, but it's probably one that every single one of us need to hold on to. The memorial stone I'm going to have you hold on to is Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. This should be your memorial stone. Print it out of your Bible, write it out, stick it on your refrigerator. Isaiah 40, 28 to 31. Because just as the Israelites needed to see God's power in parting that Jordan to know that their enemies would be driven out, this should be your memorial stone. God is saying, have you not known... Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, everything you see, that God neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak 
And to those who have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's your memorial stone. And the word in that scripture that you need to circle and print out in big, fat, bold letters is a four-letter word, W-A-I-T, wait. Now, we're going to get to why that's so important. It's so important because God is a God of purpose. We've talked about that. He's a God of design. We've talked about that. Our problem is we want to get in front of God. We want to get in front of His timing and not behind His timing. We want to take the lead. There's a reason we don't like to sit in the passenger seat and ride shotgun. We want to be behind the wheel, stepping on the gas. We don't like it when God steps on the brakes. Right? We don't like that. W-A-I-T, those who wait on the Lord. But we hate to wait. Why would I make that a memorial stone? I looked up one of my favorite poets of all time, a great poet named Veruca Salt, once wrote, I want the world. I want the whole world. I want to lock it all up in my pocket. It's my bar of chocolate. Give it to me now. And the poet continues, I want the works. I want the whole works. Presents and prizes and sweets and surprises in all shapes and sizes. And now, I don't care how, I want it now. That's our motto in life, right? Come on, you're human. You're like me. You can't wait for Christmas Day. What's with this waiting crap? Right? Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. There's a reason we wait on the Lord. There's a reason, there's a powerful reason we wait on the Lord. And the best way I could explain this to you was to give you some visualizations. I think Sarah has a shot of Diamond Head that she's going to put on there. Okay, that's Diamond Head. Just leave the shot there for a few minutes. Years ago, many years ago, we were on vacation in Hawaii, had the great fortune to go, My wife wakes up one morning, and she says, I got an idea. We've never done this before. Let's go climb Diamond Head. There's a trail that takes you from the parking lot in the crater all the way to the top. I'll bet the view's magnificent. That sounds like fun. Now, at the time, Paige was, I think, four, maybe five at the most. Julia was three years older. So we said, sure, let's go. So just leave the photo there. Don't jump ahead. Sarah, I'll tell you when to jump ahead. So we get to Diamond Head, and you actually drive through this tunnel, and you drive into the crater floor. It's a form of volcano, kind of at the base of that, on the back side of Diamond Head. And we get to the parking lot, and you get out, and it's this nice national park. And where the trail starts, it's paved concrete like a sidewalk with barely an incline. Piece of cake. Grab the girls. Let's go. Let's start walking. So we're doing this jolly old walk. Pretty soon... It gets just a little bit tougher. Now, the next slide that she'll show you, it starts to look like that. (laughs) It's no longer paved. It's, It's all rock. There's no concrete there. It's all rock, and it's all uneven. Now, about halfway up, and this goes on forever... About halfway up this, I I start feeling sorry for Paige because her little legs is tough for her. So I pick her up, and I start carrying her up the trail. Now, mind you, the journey we set out on was nice and easy. And then we start going up the rocky path. And then going up the rocky path, the burden gets a little heavier because now I'm carrying somebody. Got it? Now, just when I think we're, oh, it looks like we're right there at the top, this is the next slide we face. That. You get done with this rocky trail, and you come face to face with a sign at the bottom that gives you heart warnings, 
because it says to climb these 99 steps, you should be in decent physical shape and yada, 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 and all kinds of disclaimers so the state of Hawaii doesn't get sued, right? The journey started out so easy. It was a piece of cake. Nice paved concrete sidewalk. Yeah, then it got a little bit tougher. Then it got tougher when I had to carry somebody. Now I'm facing that. Does that sound like life to you? God gives you a dream, and there's a reason you wait on him. If God told you that was at the end or three-quarters of the way through your trip, you'd never even start off on that nice, easy sidewalk. You'd never do it. There's a reason you wait on God. If he told you everything that was going to happen to you in life, you'd say, sign me out now and take me to heaven, Lord. You've, uh, you've got my soul. I've committed to you. Just take me now. So much easier than starting on this sidewalk and then, ooh, that curveball, that switchback path that was rocky that got steeper and steeper. And then those steps, forget it. I'm not doing that. That's life. There's a reason we wait on the Lord. Because if you knew the end of the story or the journey you would take, you might not take it. Go back to the first slide, Sarah, if you can. I couldn't find a great picture of the, uh, of the view from the top, but you can imagine it. It is absolutely unbelievable. Because you're looking over that water, but that water looks completely different. It's about four different colors, and you can see the coral on the bottom. The view from the top is just amazing. I was thinking about that journey. I was at Paige's graduation from APU two weeks ago, and I was standing there on the sidewalk. Didn't say anything to Gretchen, but I was standing there on the sidewalk, and I see this trail of ants. I'm standing there watching it, and you've all, you've all watched a trail of ants. They're walking like this, and then they zig over here, and then they zag over here, and then they just go off on an endless meander. Now, half the ants are going one direction, and the other half of the ants are going the other direction, right? And every time they bump into each other, it's kind of like, boom, they bounce off each other, and then they, they kind of figure out a way to get around each other, right? Because they're trying to get, one's getting food, and one's going back for more, right? So this trail of ants. So I go, hmm. So I took my foot, and I went like that, and caused an interruption in their journey. They were confused for a minute because their scent that they had laid down to follow got interrupted. And so they kind of stopped and kind of bounced around here. And pretty soon they started going around this way and some of them went around this way. Pretty soon they got around where my footprint was and went right back to where they were supposed to be going. Their life's journey got interrupted. I somehow wonder, sometimes wonder if that's how we look to God. Because he's up in heaven and he's like, I've given you my law, not to worry, not to have, you know, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, and what you will put on. I've given you all kinds of promises that I showed you that I can part the Jordan and that I will drive out your enemies in front of you. So why are you laboring so much bumping into each other on this journey that you're on? Why don't you wait on me? Haven't you learned anything yet? That's why every time I read this scripture, I circle the word. It's circled in my Bible. I circle the word wait. Amazing things happen when you wait. Remember when Gretchen decided she wanted to go back to school? Because, you know, literally the day, the day you know, we were both let go, I, I looked at my wife and I said, what do you want to do? She goes, what do you mean? I says, your father preached a sermon one time. I'll never forget it. He stood up in the pulpit and said, so you've just been fired. Congratulations! This could be the greatest day of the rest of your life. What do you want to do? Sometimes you've got to get nudged out of the nest. I gave you a whole message on that of how the eagles do it. You remember how the nest is all fluffy and cushy, an eagle has a nest, 
and it's all, but the, the nest is actually made up of thorns, and then they pat it with their feathers and grasses and all kinds of things and make it nice and soft. Now, when it's time for the babies to get kicked out of the nest, what does the mama eagle do? She starts scratching at the bottom of the nest, churning up all of that soft stuff, and pretty soon all the thorns are sticking out. Well, the babies are squeezing, contorting, trying to figure out a way to stay in the nest but not get pricked by the thorns. Pretty soon they figured out it's time to leave the nest because it hurts there. And they get kicked out and they learn that they can actually fly. So I never forgot that sermon her father preached probably... 25 years earlier? Congratulations! This could be the greatest day of your life. So I looked to my wife and I said, what do you want to do? She said, hmm. I said, if you don't want to work, you don't have to work. Go volunteer, you know. Do Bible study. Volunteer in the church. Do whatever you, what do you want to do? And I think God started working on her of saying, get her in that volunteer position. But here's where the journey begins. Because Oh, it's easy to get into that volunteer position. That, that didn't take that much effort. A little few phone calls, a few emails, a couple of interviews. That, that journey's not so bad. But, ooh, God, what's, you're, you're poking me with this dream. What do you mean go back to school? I haven't been there in 25 years. But you do it. And it goes from a nice paved sidewalk to a little bit of a switchback rocky, like up there on the Diamond Head. And then you get to the, the, uh, the third semester of grad school. I went through that when I got my MBA. Some, something about the third semester of grad school, it, it's hell on earth. And my wife hit the third semester of grad school. I can't do this. Sure you can. No, I can't. I, this, this is too tough. What grade did you get last semester? Well, I got A's. What grade did you get the semester before that? Well, I got A's. Tell me, remind me of the miracles that God provided for you to get into grad school to begin with because it's a tough program to get into. Well, they did this and that and yonder. If God got you into school and he gave you A's in that semester and that semester, what do you think he, do you think he's suddenly not going to drive out the ites in front of you in semester three? Now, here's my favorite. These graduates, and I was the same way. Every graduate who graduates from anything, I don't care, high school or college, you graduate and you celebrate that day and the next day you're like, ah, is it going to do any good? Am I actually going to get a job? We all go through it. Well, let's see. That's why there are memorial stones. That's why God said, when, you, when I do this miracle for you, no matter how small, Pick up that stone in the Jordan, put it over here, and remember, if I can do that, I can do the bigger ite that's in front of you, right? So, let's see. If I got you through four years of school, or two years of graduate school, whatever it is, or if I got you through cancer, if I got you through this relationship hardship, if I got you through... I don't care what it was in your life that came before. If you wait on me, I'll provide the new job, the new relationship, the new health, the new hope, the new faith. But you got to have a memorial stone. And your memorial stone is the first sentence of Isaiah 40, 28. Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. That's quite a setup. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. Anytime I get weary, I look around. I look at that tree, I look at that mountain, I look at that cloud formation, I look at a sunset, and I say, the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary. And if I wait on him, he'll renew my strength. Because it's not in our strength that we get anything done. If it was up to us, we'd just as soon curl up on the couch with some Ben and Jerry's and a mindless movie and have a pity party. No matter what's going on in life, that's much more comfortable because that sidewalk is flat with no pain. 
Yeah, maybe an upset stomach the next day from all the ice cream, but come on. That journey's much easier than saying, okay, I'm waiting on you. But the thing is, waiting on the Lord, just I'll wrap this up pretty quickly. I got, I got four points here, but I'll probably do them in five minutes, so don't worry. Waiting involves four different things. Waiting involves prayer. Waiting involves prayer. And your waiting prayer can be Jeremiah 33, 3. God says, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things you do not know. Waiting involves prayer. Waiting also involves patience. I no longer pray for patience in my life. I learned that from my mother. My mother says the minute, and she's sitting in the back, right? You used to tell me, when I pray for patience, God puts all kinds of impatient things in front of me, so I learn patience. So I don't pray for patience anymore, but waiting involves patience. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. That's your patience scripture. Galatians 6.9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not in due season. That involves patience. James 5.8, be you also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draws near. Waiting involves prayer. Waiting involves patience. Waiting involves waiting on divine action. Divine action. And God will act. Job 37.5, God thunders with his voice wondrously, doing great things which we cannot comprehend. And I love divine action in this. Truly the best story of waiting is in the, the book of Daniel. Daniel 3.23. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. Remember, these guys aren't doing anything. They are truly waiting, bound and thrown in a furnace. There's nothing you can do but wait. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? And they answered and said, King, that's true. But the king said, Look, I see four men loose and walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth looks like the Son of God. That's my favorite waiting on divine action. Because so many times, if you're just wait, waiting doesn't mean not doing anything. Waiting, that's, that's the misnomer. People say, wait on the Lord. Okay, I'll just sit around and wait for God to do something. It's not the way it works. When you wait on the Lord, God will give you a nudge or a thought that you will act on. And when you act on that thought, he'll give you another nudge that will make you go up the rocky slope. And then he'll give you one more big push to make you go up the 99 steps. Waiting involves prayer, patience, and divine action, and most of all, waiting involves trust. Joshua 1.9, have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither you be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Another memorial stone. Wow. We will wait on the Lord. Let's pray. Lord God. We will wait on you because you are the creator of the ends of the earth. You are our Savior and Lord through Jesus, your Son. We will wait on you in our lives. And when your still small voice, the Holy Spirit, whispers in our ear, we will take that step. And then we will take one more step and one more step with your urging. Knowing, Lord God, that you who dried up the river Jordan to cross over will also go before us and drive out all the ites in our lives. Thank you. All the obstacles, all the detractors, all the negative thoughts that hamper us, that the enemy throws at us. You, Lord God, you are our memorial stone. We claim Isaiah 31. Isaiah 40, 31 is our memorial stone. That you will renew our strength yes. like the eagle. Thank you. That we shall run and not be weary and walk and not faint. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Is there anybody who wants to
just one second. Every, every eye closed. Every eye closed. If you have a burden that you need to release, if you have a prayer that you need answer to, that you've been waiting on, and it feels so slow in coming, with every eye closed, if you have a burden or a prayer request, just slip your hand up because God sees it. Just acknowledge it before him. Lord God, we give these to you. For you are a God of restoration. You are a God of purpose. Thank you. A God of hope. You are a Savior, our Lord, our salvation. And Lord God, you said, by my stripes, you are healed. Hallelujah. By my stripes, you are healed. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Bless each one as they leave this place. Give them a renewed sense of hope, a renewed sense of faith, a renewed sense of a great future you have in store because you are a God of purpose. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Thank you. And may God give you his peace going out and you're coming in and you're lying down and you're rising up in your labor and in your leisure and your laughter and in your tears Thank you, Paul. until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is for you no sunset and no dawning only eternal light and life forevermore. Amen. thank the Lord for all that he's done today through Gretchen. Boy, we're so proud of her. Just give her a hand. And for any of you who are still
Gretchen, Gretchen, quick, run on out there and greet her in the name of the Lord. And as you shake her, you claim your own victory. As you shake her hand, you claim your own victory in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll see you next week.